This is Rupert Reyes. I'm conducting my first interview with uh, Michael Joplin at uh, the Susanna Dickinson Museum, 411 East 5th Street, 78701, on March the 27th, 2015. This interview is part of the Conversations to Create Unity Oral History Project conducted by the Susanna Dickinson Museum and Baylor University. That's my official part now. Yes. <laughs> and now we can get more relaxed about this. Um, well, you know, the first time we did your interview, we started out with just a basic historical mm -hmm. kind of um, uh, background, like tell us, you know, basically your, your history. I know that you're native Austinite. Yeah. All right. I'm a native Austinite. Um, uh, I grew up, um, my family, um, my family, uh, I think I want to say we're fifth generation Austinites. Um, and there's a little plot of land up on off East Old Torf on Wickshire Lane um, that we call Alt Hill. Now it's a gated community. Um, after my grandmother passed away, they sold it. But that's basically the area where all of the people on my mother's side are from. Um, and then uh, my great grandmother had a house on South. Fifth Street at Mary, and then my grandmother had a house on Rab Road up from Zilker Park. So kind of all those areas were like my where I would spend my Christmas and stuff growing up. Um, but I lived with my family um, in North Austin when there was like nothing there at the time um, as a kid, and I moved around a little bit, but uh, grew up mostly in Austin. But then came back and finished high school here, stuff like that. Uh, what high school was that? Uh, I went to Westwood High School up north. Up in it's North actually in Round Rock. Uh, yeah, it's in Round Rock ISD. Mm -hmm. It's not in Austin okay. ISD. You, uh, you mentioned the you, uh, Wickshire um, Lane. Uh, I'm going to ask you a little bit about that because yeah. I know that, that Wickshire sits on the, really close to the intersection of Old Torf and uh, Pleasant Valley. Yeah. Uh, and I remember when they extended uh, Pleasant Valley past Riverside. Mm -hmm. um, so that was really out in the country. Yeah, it was way out in the country. And my, I can remember... And there was just a huge plot of land that my family owned. I mean, just like woods. It was like, I remember being a kid and we would just go out in the woods and just walk around for hours and see weird stuff. And there was like some old abandoned cabins back there and stuff. I and mean, who knows how old those were, you know? And, um, and then if you go down the hill, right now there's, well, there was pretty much most of my life there was, uh, most of my life, it probably got built when I was really young, but there's an apartment complex right across the street from Alt Hill. Um, but, you know, and then down, if you keep going down the street, it dead ends, and then there's an elementary school right there. Um, but, yeah, I just go, just anytime I go around that area with my mom, my mom was like, this is the house that I would hang out with my friends, and we would go do whatever over here. And, yeah, it was pretty, pretty rural for sure back then. Right. One of the things that, that we're, we're doing with this conversation is um, we're trying to kind of capture people's life growing up and the relationships they had with different people yeah. in Austin. Um, we're finding a lot of interesting dynamics. Some people that they grew up with a lot of blacks and Hispanics, some that actually had absolutely no interaction until yeah. uh, almost high school or college and things like that. How would you describe your growing up in terms of, of uh, your relationship with people of color? Um, I would say that it was a lot more, um, even in just like elementary school and stuff, there are a lot more people of color that I grew up with than I would see now in Austin, for sure. Um, I definitely remember riding the bus a lot um, when I got to be a little bit older because my cousin worked for Capital Metro, one of my older cousins, and so we would always take the bus. Um, to like Barton Springs and back or wherever we were trying to go during the summer. And yeah, I just remember there being a lot more people of color just around at that time. Um, and my my uncle uh, worked in construction, so he always had a lot of people that worked under him that were Hispanic. Um, and I remember, you know, that being a very inclusive part um, of our, of our life and of my childhood. But at the same time, I also remember my grandmother, uh, I mean, just coming from that time, um, 
I don't I, I don't think that she was racist, but just the time that she was from, I remember her saying stuff like, oh, this lady is a good N-word, <laughs> you know? And she was super loving and super amazing person, but I can remember when I got to an age, you know, uh, when I heard that and I was like, that is not right, you know? And then like, but you know, I don't know, it's hard to, it's hard to justify it. Um, but yeah, um, I definitely saw a lot more people than I do now living on the east side, <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah. Would you describe uh, one um, grandparent, I think you said, that lived on West Mary? Or, uh, That's my, that was my great-grandmother. Because um, from what we know about the, the history of Austin, mm -hmm. the, the Mexican community, which was at one time down on Republic Square, which, mm -hmm. is, which is Guadalupe and yeah. Fifth, um, when it was moved, uh, in like after 1928, a large portion went east and a large portion went south. Mm -hmm. And I know that area of around um, West Mary, West Annie, the South First, all that was, was where they predominantly settled. Yeah. Do you, know, do you remember seeing a... Uh, you know, I only know that my great-grandmother's house was there because she lived to be 107, my great-grandmother did. So, you know, I knew her when she was 107, you know, pretty much. <laughs> um, but I know when I used to live on uh, South Fifth Street right there by Mary with uh, my friend Adrian Mishler, um, we lived there together. And then one day my mom comes over, she was coming over to the house like the first time, like right after I moved in to maybe bring me some stuff. And she's like, right across the street, that's where I would hang out when I was a girl. That's, you know, my grandmother's house. So, you know, I, I'm not really sure what, mm -hmm. but I mean, I guess from what you're saying, it was right. and, not and, really Hispanic. And what would you consider your economic class, I mean, in terms of uh, when you were growing up? Growing up, um, I would say, I mean, I know uh, my, my mother's family, the Alt family, they, you know, were poor folk. Um, I would say me growing up though, I was probably um, come from a middle class background, um, but I am a, a first generation college graduate in my family, um, and I didn't really think that that was like a big deal, but I, but I think that's because I come from a middle class background, so I don't really like see the significance in that. Mm -hmm. um, somebody pointed that out to me recently. Um, because I guess that's usually something that's a lot more common for people who are like lower class or come from um, poor families. Um, but yeah, my dad, um, he didn't finish he didn't finish college, but he got a you know job at IBM pretty young and was a manager. So we were never we were never hurting. Probably middle class to upper middle class even at times. Back in the days when you could work your way up. Yeah. From, from uh, low, yeah. Well, you yeah. stay with a company for your whole life. Yeah. It right? doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you have a degree. <laughs> it's like, are you good at what you do? Right. Great. Right. Yeah. So, um, I'm trying to think of, uh, uh, you know, you said you left Austin. So, what age did you were you out of Austin? Um, I we moved to Keller when I was we moved around. We jumped around quite a bit in a very short amount of time. I would say that I left. We left when I was maybe six and seven. And when I was six and seven, I lived in South Africa for those two years. And then we moved back to Austin for, till I was probably like 10. And then we moved to Houston and Keller, which is like the Fort Worth area. And, and then I came back to Austin for high school. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the a lot of the school years, uh, the the first through approximately ninth grade, were not really in Austin. Yeah, like from, yeah, yeah. like growing up and then visiting and then came back for a, a minute for a little bit of elementary school, probably like fifth and sixth grade in Austin, mm -hmm. and then seventh and eighth grade, in other spots. Right. Um, you said that you had an uncle that was in construction. Yeah, my yeah. uncle Henry Henry Alt. Now, um, this was, uh, and you were saying that he had quite a bit of Hispanics working for him and stuff. Yeah, I, I just remember he would have like day laborers and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but, you know, because when I was a teenager too, I would help out and, you know, uh, kind of be an apprentice to him, but yeah. 
Now, were you aware of uh, the immigration status of any of these workers? Um, I wasn't aware of it, but I'm sure they, you know, weren't here legally. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't like, uh, but my, my uncle was very, uh, he's a very uh, kind man. And he definitely, you know, paid them what they deserved mm -hmm. and, you know, bought everybody lunch and spoke the dude. Yeah, spoke the terrible Spanish that we had. <laughs> um, and I'm a fluent Spanish speaker now, and it's funny looking back on that. I'm like, that's like actually where it started. You when know? you started learning Spanish. Well, I started learning Spanish, but his Spanish is like yeah. really, really bad. What is some of the Spanish you remember from those days? Oh, just lots of cuss words and, <laughs> uh, you know, different tools, you know, edamantos, you know, how he would say it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, in, in, uh, did you ever have any kind of conversation with them about their background? Um, you know, I didn't. Um, um, I was I was pretty young and probably, um, and I think most of them probably didn't speak didn't speak much English. Um, but you know, as I as I've gotten older, uh, so his son is an electrician. Uh, my cousin James. And um, I was a uh, apprentice to him for a good while when I was in my late teens, early twenties, and and then my Spanish was getting a lot better. And I worked on tons of job sites here in Austin, and a lot of them where um, where he would just leave me for the day, you know, dig this hole, I'll be back, get it done, you know. And I would be like the person looking after our stake in the job, you know, which might even be a pretty serious job. And so I, you know, I got to, that's where I, you know, started speaking a lot and practicing a lot of my Spanish um, with a lot of, you know, uh, guys that do drywall and stuff like that and masonry. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, we never spoke much about their backgrounds, but I just used the slang I knew. I just really enjoy speaking it. I know there's a, a somewhat of a joke about uh, when you hear Mexican music, you want to you want to put up some drywall. <laughs> uh, do you uh, do you remember any kind of like did they have music when they were working? Oh home? yeah, for sure, music. Yeah, for sure. Did you pick up any of the uh, uh, interests or likes of any of their? Music? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan of Mexican music and Mexican culture. I mean, I've, I've traveled a lot in Mexico and Mexico City. Um, um, a lot of Norteño is mostly what they would play. Um, but I'm a big fan of mariachi music. Um, and yeah, I just, I don't know. I picked up on a lot of stuff then, which is probably just them making fun of me, you know? Um, but yeah, it was, it was fun. Right. How would you say the um, the general, and again, I'm going to ask you to generalize a yeah. stereotype or whatever, yeah. I don't know, but the general attitude toward the growing Hispanic population in Austin, uh, is, which has really uh, um, uh, grown a lot with the development of Austin as more construction jobs and uh -huh. brought in a lot more uh, workers. And, and um, I mean, we're standing now close to like 35% uh, Hispanic yeah. population. Well, what would you say is a general feeling in Austin out there? Um, I definitely don't think it's negative at all. Um, honestly, the growing, it's not really something I've noticed. It feels like to me the Hispanic population has always been strong. I mean, um, but no, I don't see much like negativity about that at all. Mm -hmm. um, I, I see and hear a lot of negativity about the African American population declining for certain, but I don't really, I don't really see that. I don't, it seems to me like the, um, Hispanic population is just flourishing and becoming more interesting and, you know, it's a strong culture. I mean, and it's, it's reinforced constantly by new arrivals, yeah. you know, from Mexico. So as opposed to the black population, which really the black culture is American culture. Mm -hmm. which, um, and we are having a decline in, in the black population in Austin. Um, can, what do you what do you think that's why that's happening? I mean, I know this you're not a you're not a demographic or, or no, an not expert, a, but I do don't you, know. I mean, friends of mine, a friend of mine just moved. A friend of mine, she just moved to Washington D.C. just recently. A uh, artist friend of mine, um, 
And before she was leaving, we were talking about it at a bar, and she was just like, yeah, uh, this is not a town for black people. She's like, there's like, there's no community here, you know? And like slowly, you know, as like people get pushed out of areas or priced out of areas, you know, with all the condos and stuff going up, um, these, you know, neighborhoods and these people that have lived there forever, when they start getting displaced or, you know, those families move on or people pass away, you know, a lot of this tradition is like lost, you know, and um, I think it's a community that's very much based around the community, mm -hmm. you know, and if that's not there, it's going to be hard for it to maintain, you know, um, like I was, uh, is right, you know, and I live over on the east side and, you know, I'm white. So I guess I'm a part of it, you know, a part of the problem, you know, even though I'm from here, it's weird. But like um, the street I live on, I found out from my uncle that uh, it used to be where Stubbs Barbecue originally was, like not the restaurant, like where Stubbs lived, you know, mm -hmm. and it was just like his house and people would just go over there and hang out and like have barbecue and it's like on my street and now it's just like this other house you know and uh and then I, you know just walking around my I don't know I living in that neighborhood it's like I I, f I feel like I'm a part of the problem but I also feel like I have a strong responsibility to try to connect with as many people as possible um like on my street and in the area um yeah I don't know I come kind of randomly no, man, it's, it's great. I think, um, you know, it's interesting. I found out about Stubbs when they were in the uh, a hotel down in Delwood uh, mm -hmm. Shopping Center. Yeah. He opened his restaurant there, and um, they were saying, famous Stubbs. And I thought, I've never even heard of this guy. Yeah. He's really famous. Yeah. Uh, but he he had a reputation in his neighborhood. Yeah, exactly. Right. And uh, so now he's right here on 6, what is it, Red River? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Wow, yeah, that, that's that's a, a probably an interesting hit, hit tidbit that not a lot of people know about yeah. where Stubbs actually started. Yeah. Now, in that neighborhood, is that off of Walnut or somewhere? Uh, this is uh, at, I live at the corner of 12th and Cedar. Cedar, Cedar, okay. Yeah, 12th and Cedar. So apparently it was right across the street, there's a little convenience store mm -hmm. at like 14th and Cedar, and apparently it was right across the street, which is now like a large compound type house where, uh, and actually a guy I know who's a pretty popular DJ here in town lives. Um, but I guess that was like that whole area of land was like where he lived. Right, right. So Austin is, is enjoying a, you know, very rapid growth. I think more rap, more rapid than most normal cities. I mean, it just, uh, I think cities like to grow, yeah. but Austin, it just seemed to, to explode. Blown up. Yeah. Um, and how do you, how do you, Give, give me a negative and a positive statement about that, if you have one. If you have a negative statement about Well, that. I'm, you know, it's, it's, uh, the only constant is change. So to try to fight it is pointless to me as just as an individual and as, you know, a society. So I don't know, I get really frustrated, especially when I have like friends or I hear people talking who've like maybe lived here for five years or 10 years telling me that like, oh, this place is closing or something. And they're like upset and they don't want, and I'm like, one, you don't know anything. And two, yeah, it's changing. It's gonna keep changing. Everything's always changing, you know? Um, and you know, there's things that close that like, or things that change that like I'm sad about, but at the same time I'm not I'm not a person that's like oh it, this place used to be so much better you know um, I mean it was different because the way I look at it is right like okay well the people who were here in the 80s were like oh man you missed it you should have been here in the in the 60s man it was so much better then and the people in the 60s are like. Man, you really missed the 40s. <laughs> 40s were so sweet. You know, the people in the 20s were like, 1880s here were amazing. 
you know so to me it's just like I don't know it's like it's one of those things it's I don't know I think it's kind of I mean I just want people to be nice <laughs> that's how I feel I think I think like and there's so many cool people I know that moved here from other places that have just been living here for a little bit and I'm glad they're here so right. you know and yeah, I, I, you know the, the negative things I would say is like cost of living is, is probably a negative and like I think we're like maybe might be over building certain types of infrastructures like condos and stuff downtown you know especially when they're like um, you know uh, conflicting with interests that have existed here always like the live music scene you know like you can't just build a bunch of condos and then like try to change the live music scene because you built them next to the live music scene mm -hmm. you know that's to me is just moronic you know um, you know it's mostly just like I don't know I guess political stuff like that but as far as like um, you know my uh a ex-girlfriend of mine who lived here who's lived here for a while um, she's from Indiana I remember her telling me and she would always get super upset about everything and I'd be like you one you don't even know and two like so what like business is closed all the time you know and like sometimes it's sad but sometimes those people who sold their business made a lot of money selling that business you know maybe they wanted to retire like you don't know the whole story you know and I remember her getting really upset that they were closing a Taco Cabana. And I was like, you don't even eat at Taco Cabana. And she's like, but uh, I was just so used to seeing that Taco Cabana, you know? And, and another, um, yeah, another, another thing that happened that kind of like clued me into this, like not really thinking about the past, even when we're thinking about how everything is changing, like there's a... Uh, a bar over here um, uh, on Red River Cheer Charlie's it used to be on East 6th Street um, and it's a very popular bar for the uh, uh, gay and lesbian uh, community and I have tons of friends that work there I love the place I go there all the time I used to go to it when I was on East 6th and then they I guess either couldn't afford the rent on East 6th or they got priced out and they ended up moving to Red River but then they, when they moved, everybody was very angry, like they were being displaced. When one, they moved to another amazing location where Club DeVille used to be. And they're probably, as a business, they're probably making more money now than they were before, you know? One, right? And two, I had to be like, guys, this used to be Aunt B's. This was, you know, a black bar owned by people who've lived here for a long time before it was your place and y'all aren't even from here, you know? So it's like, you have to like, you know what I mean? Y'all did this to somebody else and now you're upset, you know? And like everybody was like, well, we gotta boycott this new bar that's there. It's like, why? They're just trying to start a bar like you are, you know? So I, I don't know, I, I don't, I don't see, I try to just have fun in the present and not dwell on the past. I mean, there's things that are gone that I miss, but, I'm not, I don't get upset about it. Michael, what do, what do you do right now for a living? I'm an actor and I'm also a, a teacher. I teach uh, after school for creative action mm -hmm. um, just down the street from where I live. Mm -hmm. And that's a big thing for us at Creative Action is because, you know, they put all those, they put all this huge row of condos in that neighborhood, right? And then, you know, now they've got, uh, you know, and there are three pretty cool nonprofits, but still it's like, oh, here we are. We're actually a part of this issue. How can we show that we're part of the issue and also help the issue? You know, so that's something we're always talking about at Creative Action. You know, and I walk my kids from Campbell Elementary. Um, and there, you know, I think I have, no, I have zero, I have zero white students that come from that school. Um, and we walk them through my neighborhood, you know, uh, to the center and um, they definitely see the change all the time you know what I mean I mean just in me being there you know and just on our walk I just hear stuff all the time you know well Campbell was predominantly black 
yeah. elementary school now. Yeah. Is that still the case now? Um, yeah. Yeah. Black and Hispanic. Okay. Yeah. That's a great school. They got an yeah. awesome, awesome principal. It's the Garza High School is now where the original Campbell was. Oh, okay. Really? And I think it still has Campbell on the building. Oh, okay. Cool. And uh, the site of that elementary school was the site of Holy Cross Hospital uh -huh. where I was born. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's not there anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I didn't realize that Holy Cross Hospital was actually tied to Holy Cross Catholic Church, which, oh. which is the black Catholic Church yeah. over off of, uh, what is that, 11th or yeah. 11th Street? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's how much Austin has changed, right? House yeah. Hospitals are now schools. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, you know, being that, that uh, um, the black population is dropping, and plus all the act, uh, Political, I guess, or the, mm -hmm. the upheaval we're seeing, or the awareness—I'm not sure how to classify it—of um, police and, and black relationships. Yeah. Um, how would you say they are here in Austin, or if that an issue in Austin? Oh, I mean, I definitely think that's an issue. I mean, we've had several, several, you know, uh, murders. <laughs> you know, uh, by police officers. I think there was one where a, he, uh, a young man was just in his car and I don't think he was armed or anything. And he was shot in his car. I know there were a lot of protests over that. Um, and I think, you know, in typical form, I think the police officer got like paid leave. Um, but yeah, I, I also, I DJ at a bar right at 12th and Chacon, which used to be um, Club 808. And that bar got closed because of the tragedy at South by Southwest last year. Um, so now there's new bar owners. Um, and so I DJ there every you know Tuesday night. And... Um, you know that's that's definitely been a street corner with a long history of crime and um, you know lots of drug dealers hanging out on that corner and lots of homeless people um, and you know uh, that block is just hot you know and uh, I just try to talk to everyone but I know there's like police there like all the time and it's also and I remember reading a Chronicle article a couple of years back about it um, and how the people in that neighborhood who lived there for years and years have been wanting the city to like do something about that street corner but the city like has not has never done anything because they're like oh this is the perfect place for this problem to be you know what I mean? And, but then slowly as it gets more gentrified over there, you know, now this bar is there, you know, and, you know, I'm just waiting for the day when they, like, do a roundup. Like, I know it's going to happen, but all these people who've been living there for years and years and years who've been asking for it, who are predominantly African-American, you know, nothing has happened. But if that block was in Westlake, you know what I mean? <laughs> it would have been done a long time ago. Right. You know, um... I don't know. And that, that's uh, the, one of the positive things of gentrification is that you get better sidewalks, better lighting, yeah. more, more uh, careful pretension safety. to the track or to safety yeah. traffic and things like that. Um, what is there, can you describe any, anything that, that uh, just one experience, I know that it may be hard to pull out a bunch, but that had like a, um, I don't know, impacted you, I think as a person in terms of your attitudes about either race or economics or um, uh, what you do for a living, I mean, something that, that uh, you can recall, any one specifically? Mm. said last time if I answered this question. <laughs> and that's why I'm asking questions of it. Yeah. Uh, hopefully it'll be a fresher question. Totally. Oh, okay, right. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Um, I can, uh, let's see. Um, 
Well, where I work now at Creative Action, we have a lot of, you know, uh, underprivileged kids from Campbell Elementary. And then we have, and we walk them from Campbell over to the center. And, you know, it's not like we walk them because they're underprivileged, but because it's very close. And then we have a van that goes and picks up kids from Blanton Elementary and the University of Texas Elementary. And those kids are predominantly white, um, with like a couple of exceptions. But they're also definitely from, you know, more affluent, you know, um, more, you know, middle class or, you know, they're not uh, underprivileged children. Um, and it's great for both groups to mingle, you know, because they don't really do that in their elementary schools, you know. Um, but I, every day I see the difference and the difference is pointed out, you know, by the kids. And, you know, um, it's, uh, and, then, and then my difference is, is pointed out as well, you know, can be. Um, it would be, you know, I've worked with a lot of different age students. It would be much tougher if they were like high school students, <laughs> you know. Um, and I've had those issues before. Um, yeah, okay, here's a good one. Here's actually a really good one. Um, I used to work for Parks and Rec for a program called Totally Cool, Totally Art. And we would go to rec centers and we would teach film classes at rec centers. And, uh, um, but there's a free program. Um, so if the kids wanted to say, screw you, I don't want to make a stupid film, I want to play basketball, okay, cool, go play basketball. I love to play basketball, so then I would just play basketball with them, you know? It's more just like, I realized my job wasn't to like make them filmmakers, but to like just be a good adult in their life, you know? Um, and then we were at one rec center that was, re uh, I want to say it's on, it's on way, it's on South 5th Street past Old Torf. There's a rec center over there, there's some tennis courts, I forget the name of the rec. But there's all, but the right across the street from the rec center there is like a, a, some projects, right? So most of the kids, yeah, most of the kids who go to that rec center from those projects. And we were there one day uh, trying to do something and we had some kids with us. And, um, and most of the kids, were African American. We were like working on a project and just getting into a conversation and these kids are like, you know, fourteen to sixteen, you know, um, or, or younger. And one kid who was white um, started like something happened or I don't know, we were, I mean it's very loose, very very chill atmosphere of the class. Everybody's just kinda of talking to whatever. And he I don't know how we got on this topic. But he started to, um, uh, he started to insult me and say that I was like rich college boy, you know what I mean? And I started getting really upset, like I was getting like angry at this kid, and he was just kind of letting me have it about my privilege, you know. And it was funny because, I mean, it wasn't funny. It was interesting because we were both white and all the other, you know what I mean? And I like, I guess I wasn't expecting that, you know? Um, but it just showed me that like, it's, it's not really about, you know, race, you know? It's more about like, where are you from and how you grew up, you know? And, you know, he was like not accepting of me. And my, my partner teacher was like, hey dude, go take a break, like, just get out of here, just go outside, because I was, like, getting really <laughs> angry, he was saying all the perfect things, and he was, like, right, you know what I mean, he was, like, right, like, everything he said, he was just, like, he had me pegged, and I, like, could not stand it, you know, and, yeah, I was getting furious, and I had to go, like, walk it off. You ever see that kid again? No, I haven't seen that kid again, mm -hmm. I haven't seen that kid again, I mean, I, we were just there that semester, but, no, I haven't seen that kid again. Then I got tons of kids that like I've seen recently, you know, but I don't know, I've made good lasting impacts on, you know. One kid we recorded a rap song and you know, I brought like professional equipment and he was like 11 years old and 
did this amazing freestyle and it's on my SoundCloud and stuff and his name's Ray and just recently um, my boss at that job sent me a picture of him and now he's 18 and he's at um, like a performing arts high school and he's playing the flute he just sent me a picture of him playing the flute and I remember when he was 11 at Givens Rec you know and like we just recorded this rap freestyle and she's like oh here's Ray and I was like oh my god that's amazing he's <laughs> the musician you know <laughs> well, I'm going to start wrapping up, but yeah. is, there, is there anything um, that, that um, you would like to add that I haven't asked? I mean, uh, again, this is the idea of capturing, you know, people growing up in Austin and uh, kind of see their, the life through their point of view. And um, um, so if there's something that you think that I should have asked that I didn't ask or comments that you'd like to make? Um, no. No. No, that's good. Okay. Do you have any questions you want to ask? Um, just uh, questions about spelling of a couple of things. Okay, we can do that off, off the table. Cool. All right, well, thank you very much. I appreciate you coming. Thanks, Rupert. All right. Appreciate it. All right. Appreciate it. All right.